Ethical behavior is not the display of one's moral rectitude in times of crisis. It is the day-to-day -day expression of one's commitment to other persons and the way in which human beings relate to one another in their daily interactions. That's a quote from Myra Levine from her time in 1972 when she was developing her conservation model theory. Myra Levine is known to the healthcare community as a true Renaissance woman. Throughout her life, she wore many hats, acting as a daughter, sister, wife, mother, friend, educator, administrator, student of humanities, scholar, enabler, and confidant. Myra Levine was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1920. She was the oldest of three children with one sister and one brother. Myra grew up with a strong bond to her family, often acting as a caregiver for her younger siblings and her father, who was most frequently ill with GI symptoms through much of her younger life. Coincidentally, her father's frequent hospitalizations are what helped her spark her interest in nursing. Myra lived until the age of 77. She died peacefully in 1996. Her nursing career started at Cook County School of Nursing, where she earned her diploma in nursing in 1944. She then went on to receive her BSN from the University of Chicago in 1949. After that, she got her Master's of Science in Nursing from Wayne State University in 1962, and then got her doctorate with an honorary degree from Loyola University in 1992. During her career, she worked in a multitude of different fields of nursing. She started off as an oncology nurse, and then was a civilian nurse for the U.S. Army, a clinical instructor at Bryan Memorial Hospital in Lincoln, Nebraska, and then became the Director of Nursing at Drexel in Chicago. She was also an administrative supervisor at the University of Chicago. Throughout her career, she published 77 authored articles. She's most famous for her publications in Introduction to Nurse Clinical Nursing, which was first published in 1969, and most famously, The Conservation Model Theory. Throughout her life, Levine experienced a multitude of life-changing events. Many of them influenced her greatest work, which is known as the conservation theory. The concepts of her theory pertain to conservation, adaptation, and wholeness are all aspects that she adapted and utilized in her own life. The world was drastically changing during Levine's development of the conservation theory. It was in 1970 when she completed her theory. During this time, the U.S. nation was in flux it was the age of theory development, which included philosophy of nursing, conceptual models and frameworks. The scientific era was right at its tail end, which recognized the need for development and definition of nursing theory and practice. The civil rights turmoil had just come to a completion in 1969, right before her theory was published. Some philosophies that served as the foundation of Levine's work included those of holistic theories, which applied to her holistic approach to patient care. Levine also integrated theories of wholeness and integrity to promote her theory and serve as an underpinning for it. She utilized theories for concepts from the humanities and sciences of nursing, physiology, psychology, and sociology. As for her own life experiences, they promoted an explanation to how conservation is a formed product of adaptation when one successfully maintains his wholeness or integrity in a response to environmental changes. For example, her sick father, in experiencing the Great Depression as well as World War, II, World War II, led her to develop these changes. Myra Levine's conservation model is used by healthcare providers as a system to effectively care for patients. Levine's model is based on four principles of conservation. The goal of this is to allow a patient to adapt comprehensively. Her four principles are conservation of energy, conservation of structural integrity, conservation of personal integrity, and conservation of social integrity. Myers' theory can be applied to any reliant patient or sufferer who openly accepts help from a nurse. The foreground of the theory is to view the patient as a whole person and not limit the individual to signs and symptoms. Myra Levine's conservation model explores the frameworks of health, person, environment, and nursing in her theory. To start with person, the person is not limited to an individual and can represent families as well as groups of people. The person is whole and reacts to changes in the environment. 
The theory also discusses health. The goal of nursing is to promote health. Health models are adaptive to change. A human's unique characteristics, culture, experiences, and spirituality alter the person's response to health. Levine also emphasizes environment. The environment completes the wholeness of an individual. The biological wellness and disease processes make up the internal environment that is tested by the external environment. The internal environment are the causative agents disrupting the internal environment. The external environment has three subcategories and theories. The first is perceptual environment. The perceptual environment is the human senses such as taste, smell, sound, and touch. Then we move on to operational environment. The operational environment includes things such as toxins, viruses, and bacteria that a person may not be aware of but can still affect the individual. Lastly, Levine talks about the conceptual environment. The conceptual environment includes a person's ethics, morals, culture, and spirituality. Nursing stimulates adaptation and fosters a person holistically using the four principles of conservation. Nurses treat, interact, and aid patients to accomplish goals. Adaptation is needed to achieve conservation. Sanai and Kali define adaptation as the steps taken because of an exchange between a human being and the environment. A person remains holistic when adaptation is successful. Adaptation is then broken down to three subcategories and theories. Historicity refers to the belief that an individual's genetic makeup will influence how they respond to challenges. For example, a person's age, sex, gender, and genetics impact how someone adapts. Secondly, specificity is identified as unique responses to a stimulus that is exclusive to a human being. Redundancy is the backup mechanism we each possess if the primary mode of adaptation fails. And then we can move on to the conservation concept. The product of adaptation is conservation. This means that the final product of how a person adapts results in the concept of conservation. Conservation can be applied to anyone and is a person's distinctive way of tackling adversities. The specific adjustments we make to adapt helps us achieve conservation. The nurse's role in conservation is to help the patient maintain wholeness with ease. Levine discusses four principles of conservation. Energy, structural integrity, personal integrity, and social integrity. Energy from the outside and from within is interchanged to maintain wholeness. Structural integrity relies on a complete immune system that embodies holistic recovery. Personal integrity establishes and sustains a person's unique sense of self. Social integrity identifies the human need to network within our communities. Levine's model suggests that the nurse's role is to assess the changes in behavior resulting from the person's attempt to adapt to the environment. There are four levels of organismic response. Response to fear, which is the fight or flight response, inflammatory response, response to stress, and as well as perceptual response. Response to fear is our initial biological fight or flight response to unforeseen changes in the environment that can cause potential harm. Our inflammatory response stimulates well-being, healing, integrity, and recovery, and is secondary response. Response to stress is gradual. The effects are determined by the amount of time the patient is exposed to the stressor. Lastly, there's perceptual response. It's a fourth response and involved in collecting data from the environment and creating a meaningful experience. The next slide describes Myers' model. It shows that adaptation involves historicity, specificity, and redundancy. From there, you can move to conservation. Conservation involves energy, structural integrity, personal integrity, and social integrity. These all branch out to person, health, environment, and nursing. Conservation model by Meyer Levine's basic concepts include adaptation, conservation, and wholeness. Many People that have explored the study show that her conservation analysis interchanges the word wholeness with integrity. The components of the theory can be further broken down. 
A literature review of Levine's theory addresses the four concepts of conservation, energy, structural integrity, personal integrity, and social integrity. According to the theory, conservation is the need to achieve integrity, which aids individuals in the nursing profession. Integrity is synonymous to ideals of honesty, trustworthiness, and morale. In a literature review by Devine and Chin, there is a discussion on what the five core values for professional nursing are, according to the American Association of Colleges in Nursing, where human dignity, integrity, autonomy, altruism, and social justice are involved. The theory has been applied to a variety of clinical settings and nursing interventions. We've also included a case study in this presentation for your viewing to show how Meyer Levine's case study can involve uh, average women in this day of medicine that had hysterectomies. It's also important to say that although this theory it was from many years ago, her conservation theory can be tested as it creates nursing interventions through the use of biophysical experiences. Allie Good explains that middle range theories can be drawn from the conservation model for various nursing situations. It can be used to formulate and research hypotheses that can be tested. One example touched upon was the middle range theory, health promotion of preterm infants, which was conducted by Mefford and Allie Good using Levine's theory as conservation as a foundation. The theory was applied to care provided by nurses to children with cancer who are experiencing mucositis, mu excuse me, mucositis secondary to chemotherapy, which is essentially a mouthful of sores after you receive chemotherapy that usually comes on about a week after the chemo. Levine's theory is able to drive the development of hypothesis which can be tested. Many studies have been able to apply the framework of the conservation model to facilitate guided research in various clinical settings. The study conducted by numerous researchers explored the nursing process is through a case study of children with cancer. Results of the study show that eight children of the 10 tested experienced energy conservation imbalances. Another eight of the 10 experienced social integrity imbalances, and all 10 had integrity disorders. Another study that incorporates a conservation model of nursing is the nursing process of individual with diabetic foot. On the next slide, you'll see examples of other studies that use the conservation model to provide a framework for research. Levine's theory contains parsimony which is simple. It contains three concepts. The first is adaptation, followed by conservation and wholeness. It can be further broken into four forms of conservation. The forms of conservation are energy, structural integrity, personal integrity, and social integrity. The theory can be generalized in how it can be implemented in any setting where a human being is suffering and seeking assistance from within the nursing profession. The model can be applied to much of nursing in regards to health, person, environment, and nursing. Lastly, Levine's theory incorporates many characters of the nursing process. It provides a solid base for the extension of nursing science. Allie Good touches upon how Levine's conservation model is one of the earliest nursing models to provide insight to nursing 